Last November, we went to Iran. We wanted to get out of the capital and talk to the people about sanctions, America, and life in the Islamic Republic. Western media projects an image that women in Iran are repressed, they don't have freedoms, they can't swim in the ocean freely. Do you have a message for people in the West? For the last 40 years, the U.S. and Iranian governments have been at odds. And for the most part, we only see Iranians on the news chanting death to America. Here on the southern beaches, we were already seeing a very different Iran. Our trip coincided with the 40th anniversary of the hostage crisis, when Iranian students took 52 Americans hostage inside the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, holding them for 444 days. Those events, a generation ago, created hatred between the U.S. and Iran that still lingers today. Between meeting hardline radicals at the celebrations for the anniversary and getting off the beaten path, this is a look inside the Iran you might not always see on TV. The Shah's life against the freedom of 50 American hostages whose mental state and physical condition remain a mystery. In the case of any military intervention, Khomeini returned the hero, the man who led the revolution to topple the Shah. Iran is an island of stability in one of the more troubled areas of the world. And I promise you, you will use every legitimate means to free your loved ones from captivity. They keep calling us the great Satan. It doesn't bother us. Sticks and stones. Iran and Libya are two of the most dangerous supporters of terrorism in the world. They will pay the price. Oppression and tyranny must be destroyed. We don't want that government. It would be a mistake to believe that the revolution against the Shah was purely religious. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil, arming to threaten the peace of the world. Mr. President, I decided that a strong, confident America could advance our national security by engaging directly with the Iranian government. The United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. Yeah. We're about to walk into the, the Grand Bazaar, it's, it's bustling. We're trying to cross the street. Try not to get Jay killed at the same time. Nice pomegranates. It's like six kilometers long and ancient. Since 1979, 
Sanctions imposed on Iran by the U.S. and the international community have been gradually ramping up. But now, under President Trump's policy of so-called maximum pressure, the country is banned from buying and selling almost everything on world markets. I mean, it kind of makes sense when you walk through a place like this that the Iranians, even though they are suffering from what they describe as economic terrorism or economic warfare, that they're also like, sanctions, schmanctions, we survived for so long before, we'll be fine. It's a known thing that Persian rugs are of the best quality in the world, and we're surrounded by amazing carpets. With the recent sanctions, they've specifically said in America that Persian rugs are not allowed. But here they're like, no big deal. We'll just send it to our buddy in Dubai, and he'll repack it and send it to the States, door to door, no problem. So they're not really sweating it. So we are doing the cliché thing at the Spice Market in the Grand Bazaar at Tehran. I mean, we kind of have to, right? I have special requests from home in New York of things I need to bring home. I kind of don't even know what they are. So can I just get one sheet of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Alongside an incredibly deep tradition of literature, art, and culture, and despite 40 years of sanctions, they have subways and make their own cars. Their automotive industry, it's the second biggest industry in the country. Gas is eight cents a liter, so the streets are packed. Traffic is gnarly all the time. You don't see multinational mega chains, which some would argue is the upside of being sanctioned. And regardless of people's politics, the revolution that took place 40 years ago has defined their modern identity and you see it all over town. So in our bid to understand Iran beyond just its capital, we figured what better way to meet people than the confined space of a cross-country train journey. We needed to go to the very south and that just happened to be the last stop. The Iranian regime is the leading state sponsor of terror. It exports dangerous missiles, fuels conflicts across the Middle East, and supports terrorist proxies and militias such as Hezbollah, Hamas, the Taliban, and Al-Qaeda. We came at a time when tensions had reached an all-time high. Since Trump came into office and tore up Obama's Iran policy, coupled with his warmongering rhetoric, Suffice to say that relations are awful right now. You know, Trump just came in and he just wanted to say like, fuck you, Obama. Like, this was a bad, bad deal. We're pull unilaterally pulled out of this thing that everybody had worked on and everyone agreed was a very good thing. Oh, let's go to the dining, dining car. Let's see if we can find some people to hang out with. How do the people in Iran feel about the future right now? Are they hopeful? I mean, the people of Iran and the people of America do not have any other problems. But, well, these are the governments that are the ones that are the ones that are the ones that are the ones that are the یه این اتفاق واسه مردم بیفته که مثلا یه مریضی که ام اس داره الان بتونه دارو و گیر نیاره سانکشنز ور امپوزد وات واز دی امپکت من نگرانم که الان شکم عمل نه میخوام برم هیچ قلبم خیلی خرابه قلبم چی شما امور باری اون خراب شده I think Iran has done a lot better than a lot of other countries who would have been in the same situation. Iran has done a lot better than a lot of other 
Our local producer Caddy is also a documentary filmmaker who lives in Tehran. She's seen these issues from every angle. Have you taken this train before? No, it's my first time. So, but this is funny. I it's, like the yeah, atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, I believe that every cabin has a, their own life. It's a it's little, funny, little yeah. universes, yeah, little worlds, right? Exactly. Do Iranians still see America as the great Satan? Uh, no, no, no. That was a thing before. No. Right. You know that death to America, it's, it's just a war. And uh, so sometimes, you know, we are under sanction. Uh, we are suffering from lack of uh, medicine, something for uh, uh, daily routine life. Uh, we don't have. So when they say that to America, it comes from somewhere. It's kind of ingrained in people when they like Iran. Oh, Iran is like a, you know an unstable actor. They can't be trusted. It's a dangerous country. It's all yeah. these things. But we are not dangerous. Yeah. Are we? Are we? Are you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We are not dangerous, it's a safe country, but, but you know, maybe it's happened because of their behavior with us. For 40 years, we, have, we had sanction, we were under sanction, and we deal with this. Yeah. This is the Iranian culture. This dining car is getting very colorful now, yeah. with the disco lights. <laughs> like a disco, yeah. The train has stopped, everyone has disembarked because it's prayer time. And this is where people are doing Razu. And this is their little railway mosque. By the second day, people really started warming up to us. We're very far from the kind of death to America, intense Tehran. Finally, 22 hours later. Merci, thank you. So we're here right on the Strait of Hormuz and um, the UAE is directly across in Oman, very close to Dubai and Saudi Arabia. Closer to Riyadh than we are to Tehran at this point. From what I saw of Bandar Abbas, it felt like an entirely different country from Tehran. A weird hybrid between an Emirati Gulf state and a South Asian country. Not the Iran that I had visited before. The city sits on the Strait of Hormuz, a strategically vital waterway through which Iran exerts control over a third of the world's oil. And historically, the Strait has long been the site of conflict between the U.S. and its allies, going all the way back to the days of the Cold War. The U.S. is coming out with a tough warning for Iran. It's saying that any disruption in the Straits of Hormuz will, quote, not be tolerated. The Strait is effectively controlled by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps or IRGC. Goods and services flow through those oil waterways and people want to see that commerce continue. A shadowy military organization, which Trump has classified as a terrorist group. We hope for their sake they don't do anything foolish. If they do, they will pay a price like nobody's ever paid a price. He thrust the group into the spotlight in January 
by assassinating one of their top commanders. We wanted to speak with the IRGC, but their press office hadn't been returning our calls. So we tried to chase down their commander after a speech. He might have already left. Did he leave already? Oh, God. That's the guy who could hook up the interview right there. The blazer. Everybody's chasing the commander of the Revolutionary Guard. Now we're about to all walk into traffic, it looks like. He said the dog is the brother of the fox. Then walked away. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> he shut me down, didn't want to talk to me, but we've tracked down his predecessor and uh, he's invited us to his home and will talk to us, which is great. If you look at the some picture, for example. When I was in Afghanistan, yeah. during the war between the Soviet Union, this is in, in Iraq, this is me, before the war. So you were the head of IRGC during the war? Yeah. So you were like the top guy? Yeah. How many and how many troops did you have reporting to you? How many people were you overseeing? Whole, oh, whole of the, the entire thing. operation of the VRS. Earlier this year, the Trump administration designated the IRGC as a terrorist organization, which was unprecedented. Um, what is? What are your thoughts on that? خب سپاه پاسداران قلاب اسلامی در اساسنامش این هست که از مستضعفین دنیا دفاع کنه کسانی که کشورشون اشغال شده کسانی که مورد ظلم و ستم آمریکا هستن اگر اسم این رو که دفاع از مردم کشورهای مستضعفه رو آقای ترامپ تروریست میدونه به نظر میشه که باید ایشون بره مطالعات سیاسیش رو بفهمه فرق تروریست بودن و on the subject of Trump, from you know his rhetoric towards Iran, it's it escalates and it de-escalates, and but it goes up and down, and it seems a lot worse than it was during the Obama administration. But I'm curious what you think the implications would be if Trump actually does attack Iran. What would happen? خب تحلیل من این که تصمیم حمله به ایران رو آقای ترامپ گرفت. اون هم به خاطر اینکه نه از جنگ چیزی میدونه اما اوغلای امریکایی که حالا بعضی از مستشاران آقای ترامپ هستن به نظر میسه که بهش گوش زد کردن که اگر این اقدام رو انجام بده کل منطقه درگیر یک جنگی خواهد شد که بدتر از ویتنامه جنگ فرسایشی و دراز مدت خواهیم کرد به راحتی میتونن در مقابل هر گونه تهدید نظامی بیستن به خاطر ما توصیه‌مون به آمریکایی‌ها این است که ما رو تست نکنید Everyone is testing each other in the Strait of Hormuz That's all right We needed to see it for ourselves So we're going on, on a boat into the Strait of Hormuz. There's been a lot of action over this year in the Strait. A lot of tankers have been getting attacked. Uh, Iran's been getting blamed for it, like a Japanese and Norwegian tanker were attacked. Iran denies it. An Iranian tanker was seized by the British uh, because they said they were shipping crude oil to Syria, which was a violation of sanctions. And then. Iran kind of retaliated and messed with a British tanker. Uh, so this has all been happening in the last few months. So there's a lot of action out there right now. Like one third of the world's 
oil supply goes through the Strait of Hormuz. So we're going to go check out the tankers. The Revolutionary Guard also patrols the area, um, so maybe we'll see them too. Iran is, with the current sanctions, Iran is banned from trading oil with anyone. But from the amount of tankers you see, where, wherever you see red lines of the tankers, that means that they are empty and that oil has been dropped off. So there is a lot of oil trading hands and the Revolutionary Guard and that kind of naval warship right there is going around and patrolling, checking out the different international tankers. Another thing that's been happening is that the Chinese ships have been turning off their transponders and that allows them to then kind of steam along and transport oil in secret. And then you have the, you know, the Brits and the Americans saying, don't let that Chinese tanker port here because it's got Iranian crude oil on it. So Iran has made it very clear that regardless of sanctions, they will not stop selling oil to whoever wants to buy oil from them. And they said that the international community has no right to tell Iran that they can't do that. Basically, fuck you, you're going to sanction us, we're going to sell our oil. Pulling out of Bandar Po, uh, going to Kashem after starts and stops in other cities. Uh, finally, on a ferry late at night. It's kind of chaotic here. There's a big safety first sign, and it's felt anything but safe. People jumping onto ferries after they've already left the shore. We actually got hit by a like a barge. Um, but, and now we're packed like sardines on this thing. It's all good though. Our hotel was actually housing for workers at an adjacent shipyard who were building luxury yachts before sanctions caused their investors to pull out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking to some fishermen this morning and they said that, you know, the sanctions are affecting their ability to get the, the gear that they need to do their jobs. We're talking to you now and it's shut down your entire business. It feels like the sanctions really are having an impact on Iran. Is that, would you agree with that? Yeah. هم کارشناس های اروپایی قرار گرفت هم محسس های لوز تایید کرد سیستم اینجا رو بعد بنا بود که تو این مرحله بودیم که اینه به حساب تشیزات چه بخریم و اینه تکمیل کنیم و دو فرمن سازه دیگه دست بگیریم ما اگه می افتاد رو روال عادی می تونستیم سال دو تا خروجی مون باشه ولی اونا مشکل داشتن که حالا بیان تو ایران با توجه که سرمایه گذاره عمده بودم می ترسیدن از تحریم هایی که آمریکا ایجاد کرده که کار ادامه بدن گفتم واسه ببینیم مسئله تحریم ها چی میشه که یکی دو سال هم بودن بعد از توقف بعدش دیگه تصمیم گرفتن یعنی با فشار ما که آقا سهام باید کارخونه فعال باشه دیگه سهامشون رو واگذار کردن و شرکت ترک کردن 
how does it feel when you walk into your shipyard and you see this half-finished yacht here that's been sitting here for 15 plus years? One of the mountains, when I said to you, the people who are going to go to this place, I said, I'm going to go to this place. Ich habe mich gehabt, an den Nappel ist es schon. Jonah? Nun, am Korb. Ich habe mich gehabt, an den Nappel ist es, was ich passe jetzt. Ich habe mich gehabt, an den Nappel ist es, was ich passe jetzt. Und die Menschen, die ich passe jetzt, haben sich von einer Seite auf jeden Fall sehr gut gefunden. از یه طرف افسوس می‌کنن از باب این تحریم‌هایی که ایجاد شده The Strait of Hormuz, it's on the news all the time as this international flashpoint where is World War III going to kick off? The reality is it's where the Iranians come and hang out and it's super good vibes. After what felt like a little vacation in the south of Iran, it was time to head back to the city. But before we went to the 40th anniversary event at the former U.S. Embassy, we wanted to see the shrine of the Ayatollah Khomeini. He was the guy who 40 years ago led the revolution, through which he molded the psychology of modern Iran, creating the country we see today. I'm trying to get one where the reflection's not on us. So we're at the Ayatollah Khomeini shrine, and it is an epic place. Its scale is, is massive. It's a $2 billion project that they started 30 years ago, and it's still unfinished. He was the guy who brought what the West calls radical Islam to the world. And in the modern era, I, I can't think of a leader who's been more defiant towards the West and towards America specifically. And his spirit of defiance has cast a very long shadow. <laughs> They have um, some pretty great coffee mugs, prayer beads, swag. 
Khomeini swag. I want a picture of a uh, t-shirt of Khomeini when he was young. Oh, the, the, the triple hug's really good. Me too. Okay, so let's get two of those mugs. Two of these. One for you, one for me. And can we get another prayer bead? Two of these. In 1979, when radical students took over this American embassy, they looked to Khomeini for approval. This embassy was the biggest embassy that America had anywhere in the world. It's pretty crazy. He could have shut down the siege, but instead gave his blessing. Interesting how things change, right? Like in the 50s, we're just going to build this huge thing. It's like 26 acres. I like that they left the the seal on the front of the building though. Here we go, into the den of spies. The decision created the bitter animosity between the US and Iran that continues to this day. Arms transfers, these are the documents that they found and pieced back together. It was their proof that it was a espionage going on in here from the Bureau of Intelligence and Research, confidential, not releasable to foreign nationals, about the Strait of Hormuz as the control point for Persian Gulf tanker transit. There are still radical students in the embassy. It's been turned into a strange museum used to indoctrinate young Iranians in anti-American ideology. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Server room. Hussein Sheikh al-Islam was one of the ringleaders of the hostage crisis and allegedly its chief torturer. Embassy. So this sorry, embassy. If, if the Carter administration hadn't accepted the Shah into America for cancer treatment, there would have been it, it no would, oh, no, 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 exactly what you say. A student sit together, said, okay, this is what they are going to do. They're going to do. We go and take over the embassy. We say, give us the show, we give you the hostages. And we wait for 48 hours, 72 hours. If Imam Khomeini supported, we continue. And then Imam Khomeini, supported. I told us, said, I yes. support them. All oh, Iranian people, Iranian, whoever were, who were in Tehran was in front of the embassy, supporting their students. Because Shah has done so many bad things to yeah. us that we wanted to a trial for him. There's so many reports though about what happened like that it, it was translation that went to interrogation that went to torture. No, no, no. It wasn't that you personally were involved with torturing. No, 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 no. It, it wasn't you a torture. No, no, no. It wasn't a torture. Never torture. No, no, never torture. No, never torture. Because it was an order from Imam. I'm, I'm not saying because I, I, I was. So they're lying. They're, they're lying. No doubt they're lying. They make them. Some lie. of the other students have gone on record to say that they regret. What no, they no. Did. I don't. I don't regret. I'm, I, I think it was the right thing to do. I think uh, still it is the United States who is going to mistake toward Iran. Right. Uh, no. Next, we spoke to one of Sheikh Al Islam's comrades, who is now one of Iran's most senior politicians. We're about to go meet Vice President Ebdekar. She was one of the big players in the hostage crisis. The hostages are in our hands, and we protect them strongly. And we are ready so that in the case of any military intervention, we will destroy them. She was the spokesperson for the hostages and also a translator. Um, here we go. You said yourself that if there was an attack on this embassy, that you would destroy the hostages. Could you really do that? Yes, we mean it. Madam Vice President, is that the right way to refer to you? Yes. All right. Thank you for taking the time with us today. You, as a young activist, along with your comrades and your generation, had a very, very significant impact in shaping the country. 
what do you say to the, the, these young activists today who are fighting for things that you might not be in agreement with? We have to see everything in the historical context that it took place. Those early days of the revolution, the youth at that time, they were listening to what was happening in the world in terms of all the anti imperialist movements and even the young generation today, they understand very well how these terrible sanctions today inflicted by the American government are uh, hampering the, the advancement of our society and preventing them from finding decent jobs or from the economic uh, advances that they expect their societies to have. But not all the anger on the streets of Iran is fueled by sanctions. One precursor to the current protests was the White Wednesday movement, women protesting the mandatory wearing of the hijab, or Islamic headscarf. What do you say to the young women who say that we don't have enough freedoms and the women in the White Wednesday movement who say we don't want to wear our headscarves anymore? After the Islamic Revolution in Iran, we have uh, a set of regulations and norms in our society uh, based on our religious values and the majority of the Iranian people cherish those uh, values. Those values are not meant to restrict women or men but they're meant to ensure that there is a dignity that's preserved in relationships between men and women and that harassment does not in, uh, occur in our society. Uh, the practice of modesty in dress, modesty in behavior. Campaigns which are directed from abroad mostly or uh, they're meant to, uh, to bring a different paradigm which is usually Western oriented, uh, they won't be uh, accepted by the majority of the society. Thank you so much. Thank you. After the embassy was captured, artists painted the walls with anti-American murals. For the 40th anniversary, they unveiled new ones. It seems that the regime has doubled down on revolution. There's no moderation here, really. Uh, this one here, they're at the table, uh, but the American diplomat is wearing fatigues and combat boots. There's no Trump up there. Bush looks a little weird. This one is uh, kind of heavy. It's got a nod to Israel, LSD. America is the depraved country. Everybody's shooting dope and taking LSD. Not that they're not shooting dope in this country. Is that a mustache or Trump's hair on the gun? Trump's, Trump's hair on the gun. Okay, so one reference to Trump. Mickey Mouse with the gun. McDonald's serving up barbed wire. And the Statue of Liberty's torch, which has been extinguished and smoke is just coming out. <laughs> this one's just bad. It's like Brooklyn student art show, the impotent gun. Before the rally, we wanted to meet with some young people in one of the little cafes we'd been having lunch at. I don't like the name of this restaurant, cafe. It's a cafe. Yeah, a cafe. Um, what is the name of this cafe? Tehru. Tehru. What does that mean? It's the city. Uh, it's street talking version of Tehran. Yeah, it's a street word. Right. When President Trump got mad at Rouhani, he said, "Fine, I'm going to do 16 more rounds of sanctions against Iran." When you hear that, do you think, "Oh shit!" Like life is going to get harder? Yeah. یواش یواش به این فضا عادت کردیم یا جنگ بوده یا تحریم بوده یا نبوده الان هم دیگه به نظرم تقریبا یه عادت خیلی زیادی کردیم به همین تحریم ها دیگه باش دیگه کردیم من چهل ساله که با این تحریم ها زندگی می کنم میشه تحریم بودیم What is it like for women in Iran? Do you have enough freedom in Iran? البته چیزا زن های ایرانی آزادی لازمه رو دارن هجاب چیز خوبیه برای کشورهای دیگه که به ما بتونن گیر بدن موضوع خوبی برای شماست برای ما خیلی چیز اذیت کنی چون خ... تو همین کافه بیشتر از خیلی از کشورهای عرب منطقه دخترها اینجا رو میگردونن حتی He just said, Iranian women have enough freedom 
<laughs> as a man, he's saying yeah. that. But okay, but but let the women speak. Do you agree with him? This is life. It's harder so for women. But it's just my opinion. Yeah. Because we have so many limits, but these are the rules. This White Wednesday movement. Yeah. I've heard. A, I've only heard a little bit about it. What do you think of it? Let's not talk about it. Really? Yes, it's too I, didn't, I didn't know it was such a sensitive subject. It's so sensitive. Yeah. Super sensitive. We don't want to end up in jail, right? Uh, there's a famous quote that says, uh, we used to drink in public and pray in private, but now we pray in public and drink in private. That says it all. Iranians say that they are all crazy. They are all crazy. We're not tourists. <laughs> and any uh, terror attack that happened in the US, no Iranians were involved. And this discrimination is kind of hurts our feeling, but everyone loves US. Are you going to go to the embassy tomorrow? Uh, no. no. For, uh, for uh, what? Protesting. It's for students. American flags. That's for students, and this, uh, most of them are made to. Right. Uh, yes. Right. The idea that they would attend the rally was comical to them. Thank you. And when we saw it for ourselves, that made sense. I think there's going to be a lot of this. These like buses. Uh, they bus people in for it from townships. Yeah. Angry students who've been fed propaganda their whole lives. Young kids had been bussed in from the outskirts for a fun Propaganda Day street fair of anti-Semitic and anti-American activities. Oh, they're making swords out of balloons, I think. This is the anti-Semitic booth. The, the angry birds destroy Star of David, also known as happy birds. So they've got a massive slingshot set up to shoot at the Star of David in front of this happy bird set. It's like an amusement park. I mean, it's kind of like they're making it fun for kids with all the activities. They're getting them early. The older kids burn flags, the younger kids get to play baseball. It's like an Iranian county fair. Emotions are really wrapping up here now. All of Trump's recent rhetoric has really increased the anti-American sentiment in Iran right now. Now, granted, this is a, a gathering of hardliners, but it's pretty full on. Today important, the 40-year anniversary of the students taking control of what is now the former U.S. Embassy. How is it important? Yeah. Because 40 years ago, a students like me said that there must be no American presence in Iran. They put an end to this. This seems to be one of the standard activities at the uh, anniversary events, stomping on the American flags. What does it say on your hands? The you know, burning of the flags, stomping on the American flag, effigies, just anti-American sentiment at a fever pitch intensity. They've modernized the message. Why are you here today? And giving the young generation that kind of revolutionary philosophy and spirit to carry into the future for the next 40 years. At the rally, Iran's official ideology seemed as alive as ever. <laughs> Things just got really heavy really fast. <laughs> But away from the camera, people often had a very different point of view. The thing is, we've spoken to so many people, 
who have a lot of fear about being honest and telling us how they really feel. You know, a couple women who refused to talk to us were saying it's not just being told how to dress, but how to think and that kind of subject of mind control seems to be a running theme. So, um, you know, and what they're afraid of is ending up in that prison over there, which is where all the, the political prisoners are sent. It's called Evin. It's kind of the legendary, terrifying place that nobody wants to end up. It had been an eye-opening trip. From hardliners to hipsters, it seemed everyone was frustrated. But not with regular people. With governments and policy, America's and their own. the practice space for an Iranian death metal band called Chaos Descent. Tensions between the U.S. and Iran haven't been this high since 1979. And uh, we should probably get on a plane and go home because we're the only American news crew in the country right now. It's probably not wise to be here, but we had one last thing to shoot. It was these guys, uh, Chaos Descent. And um, so, you know, priorities because heavy metal rules. Hey. All Iranians have a kind of private freedom. You know, right. we can do all the things in our houses, uh, on our uh, parties, but uh, not out of that. Right. Is it illegal for you to play concerts Kinda. in public? It is. Yeah. It's not illegal to play no, no, no. In, in the studio, is okay. that's we fine. Is okay, but uh, in public, having a you gig can. or a live, a live concert uh, is uh, kind of uh, brutally illegal, <laughs> you know? You can have a, a, a live gig uh, with jazz or fusion without vocals, right. but metal is completely illegal. Right. Someone check your lyrics, someone uh, check your music, uh, so, some, sometimes, I don't know why they uh, uh, tell us that this music is satanic and I don't know uh, what kind of relationship with the music and Satan. This is the political situation in Iran and internationally. Kids in their 20s, you know, like the younger ones, teenagers in their 20s, uh, are, the, they, are they politically engaged? Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, we have a situation here, uh, new generation, uh, is so depressed. People do not act about their situation, about mm. to change the situation. They just uh, sit and watch the whole uh, happening in, in the country. Right. But do nothing. You could leave. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the only option. Right. But do you want to leave? You do? Yeah. yeah. We want. We want. <laughs> right. As a band. Right. The name of your band, Chaos Descent. Yeah. In Persian, uh, you descend after chaos. Your situation will reflect in your art. He saved a lot of lives by terminating his life. You can uh, lie and uh, live easy. You can tell the truth and go to the jail. The evidence indicates that the plane was shot down by an Iranian surface-to-air missile. And are things getting better or worse? <sighs> I could say worse. Really? Yeah. Iran confirmed more than 800 new cases on Tuesday, bringing the total to over 2,300. 
important, it also seems that senior officials are not immune to the virus either. Thank you for, for talking to us. Have a good really day. Really appreciate it. Yeah, best of luck to you. So it kind of describes your world. Yeah. Yeah. Pursuit of war, and frequently the words of the pursuers fall on deaf ears.